Welcome to Across the Nation here on AmericanFreePress.net. I'm Mark Anderson, corresponding editor for AFP. And I'm with Ellen Brown at the Health and Freedom Conference in Irvine, California, March of 09. And she spoke at this conference on her book, The Web of Debt, The Shocking Truth About Our Money System and How We Can Break Free. And in a moment, she'll give us kind of a four-point outline of how we can go about breaking free. And what I heard uh, this weekend about this book when she gave her talk was a, a very interesting uh, uh, outline of what's going on with our money system, not just about the known things about the Federal Reserve being uh, very dominant of our system, but a lot of the details, the warnings that people like William Jennings Bryan gave us, and how all this has led up to our current financial dilemma, which, despite what we're told by the dominant media, is largely traced to the banks and I would add somewhat to our trade system and those two kind of go hand in hand and I appreciate you being with me today Ellen. Thank you. Uh, this book I can tell is going to be a, a really good seller. Uh, I'm sure that it'll be reviewed at AFP really soon. At any rate uh, a lot of us know and can find out by reading this about the monetary system and the, the terrible bind that it's put us in and how it was intentionally foisted on us to bring us under sort of a command and control economy. Um, without going into too much detail, uh, because there'll be a news story accompanying this book and things like that, what, what is the basic way out of this, or what is the sort of central dilemma, and how do we break out? Um, two competing monetary systems have vied for dominance in the world for the last 300 years. Uh, a privately issued money controlled by the banks, issued by the banks, they issued it originally as banknotes, and then the Federal Reserve, which we now know as a private banking corporation, now issued their notes, which makes it look like they're government issued, but they're still actually issued by a private banking corporation. And 97% of the money supply is issued by banks directly in the form of loans. So that's one system. The other system was uh, publicly issued money. This was what we had all through the 18th century. That's like government issued money. And it's what uh, Benjamin Franklin said was what made our country great. The and, colonial script. Yeah, and it was what what we fought the Revolutionary War for, according to Benjamin Franklin, because the king said we couldn't do it anymore, and that just totally shrank the money supply. We didn't have any money anymore. It would be like the president saying you can't use your dollars anymore. So the colonists, of course, rebelled and did, did their script anyway. Putting to rest the uh, it's all about tea story, but going yeah. on. Yeah. So, uh, Abraham Lincoln did that again during the Civil War. He issued greenbacks. That's the only president. Well, the, uh, Kennedy may have tried to do it, but of course he gets assassinated. So yeah, there's some debate on that, but go yeah, on. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. debate, right? Anyway, so now we've come to the end of a 300-year Ponzi scheme, which is what the banking system basically is, because they is issue money as loans. They don't issue that. They issue the principal, but not the interest. So there's always more money owed back than there was in the system to start with. Yeah, there's never enough to pay the usury. Th yeah. They always undercut the, the public in that way, but go on. Yeah, so you mm -hmm. have to continually get new borrowers to support the pyramid, and we run out of borrowers, and that's basically where we are today. So the way out of this mess is to uh, is a publicly issued credit system. Uh, look, if I may, ways. if I may interject real quick before you go into the four ways, where money is produced by our government for the people and not bought from the money sellers in the banks, therefore it's created interest free rather than uh, borrowed or loaned into the system at interest plus full face value. Right. So debt free money. Now those four points. Yeah. Well, it's debt free to the government. You could have. You still want a credit system, so you still want people borrowing it, and it's all right if they pay interest on it, but it would be interest that goes back to the government, so it's a circular system. Yes. And the government, having having the power of the printing press, would be able to create a little extra to cover the interest. That's what they did in Pennsylvania. So which you, you was wouldn't a have the mathematically sound system. Right. Yeah. You wouldn't have this shorting the people to where you never have enough to pay the interest. Right. And Pennsylvania experimented with that at the state level. At, Provincial, when they were. Before they were a state. Yeah. Okay, the, right, the provincial government. Yeah. But go on, uh, I know that there's uh, state banks, there's one in uh, one of the Dakotas that actually exists. Michigan's toying with the idea. But before we get to that, what are these four points? Okay, the, the direct way would be to nationalize the Federal Reserve and make it what people think it really is, which is a federal funding agency, a federal bank. And then it could issue dollars directly instead of the government issuing bonds or debt and then the Federal Reserve monetizing it, let the Federal Reserve issue the money as the government, as an agency of the government. But that might be difficult to get past. It would be controversial. So the, the second possibility would be 
to um, let the Federal Reserve monetize the Obama stimulus plan, for instance, and rebate the interest. The Federal Reserve always rebates the interest now on what the money that the government borrows. And the reason is Wright Patman in the 60s tried to uh, get the Federal Reserve nationalized when he realized, well, he was uh, head of the House Banking and Currency Committee. Yes. When he realized what was going on, he tried to shut down the Federal Reserve and or to nationalize it, and that didn't happen, but they did agree that they would rebate the interest. So if you rebate the interest and roll the loans over indefinitely, which always happens with federal debt, it is never ever paid off, it's just rolled over. So loans rolled over indefinitely at, at nearly zero interest is the same as issuing money, but it's a way to do it that's totally legal, it's, you know, they're already doing it. In fact, the Federal Reserve just created 1.2 trillion on their books in the last year. But they didn't print all that in terms of no, currency. It's, it's just... It's, yeah, it's, you don't have to print it. You can just write it up in an account and it's still money. It can be drawn on. It's an account that can be drawn on. Right. Now, I'm moving on. So that's not two. A third possibility is when these banks go bankrupt, um, instead of... They're calling it nationalization now, but they're not really nationalizing. Like uh, Citigroup, we own... We've paid enough money to Citigroup to buy the whole thing. And we only own 38% of the stock, and all we're doing is bailing out the, we're providing the capital so that they can clean up their books, and then we're going to hand the thing back to them. So well, the, that we're, is we're not put, a nationalization. So taxpayers are put on the line long enough to clean it up so we give them a clean slate. Now moving on, uh, for brevity's sake, what's the next okay, step? So, so what we could do is put those banks through bankruptcy in the ordinary way, FDIC receivership, and then nationalize it. So they would be a, a whole, for instance, if you just nationalized Bank of America, you would have a, a bank, bank in every town, you would have a public banking system right there. One one bank could would be sufficient to provide a public banking system. And we've had that before, it's not, and other countries do it. It's not unheard of to have public branches. Of, for instance, in it, India, they have public and private banks at the same time. In Switzerland, they do. So, and the fourth thing, and this is where I think we should start, is with the state banks. Uh, there's one state bank in the country right now, state-owned bank, and that's North Dakota. They put all their government assets in the bank by law. Then they do what any bank does, which is expand that into ten times that sum in loans. Through fractional banking. Right. So now they have plenty of credit. And because they own the bank, they can make set the terms. So. They lend to farmers at 1% interest. They're very liberal on their foreclosure. You know, they don't do foreclosures. They work it out. Um, and they could, in theory, make 0% loans to themselves and roll them over indefinitely, just like the Federal Reserve could do. So it's a, within the state credit mechanism. They've escaped Wall Street, and it was set up just for that purpose in and, 1919. And, and Michigan is looking at the possibility of the same thing? Well, they're, they're looking at having a conference on that. I'm actually speaking at the, um, the Whole Earth uh, Expo in Rochester, Michigan on April 18th and 19th, it is. Do you remember the contact information websites for that, by chance? Uh, you can Google it, Whole Earth Expo, yeah. Uh, in Rochester, Michigan, April yeah. 8th and 9th? 18th and 19th. 18th and 19th. Well, very interesting. You can read more in Ellen's book, The Web of Debt. And I'm Mark Anderson with AmericanFreePress.net. We'll see you next time here and across the nation.